Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link. And today in the world of Destiny 2, we had the official unveiling of the Devil's Ruin Exotic Sidearm Quest. That's right, this quest is live in the game right now, and it's actually a very, very quick and easy quest to get done for what is ultimately a pretty fun and interesting exotic sidearm. Words you don't really hear too often in the world of Destiny 2. But of course, in this video, we're going to be showing you exactly how you can complete the quest to get your hands on this weapon, as well as our initial thoughts on how it performs. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, when you log into Destiny 2 today after the reset, you're going to get a splash screen telling you that a brand new weapon frame is available in the Sundial 6-man activity. So go ahead and load up the normal mode of that. It is worth noting that the hard mode of the Sundial went active today as well, but you don't have to complete that for this exotic quest. Once you've loaded in, go ahead and complete your Sundial run, and at the end, when you're choosing your weapon frame, you'll have an additional option to choose the Devil's Ruin. Doing this will move you on to the next part of this quest. Once you've completed this, your next step will be to go visit Saint-14 in the tower, who will recognize that this weapon frame is one that matches a weapon that was used in the legendary Battle of Twilight Gap. And so, in order to finish the weapon frame, you need to return to Twilight Gap and find 10 different weapon frames. That's right, we're heading back to Twilight Gap, and essentially in this mission, you're going to be hunting down the Red Jack weapon frames. Once you've finished speaking to Saint-14, a brand new quest is going to appear in the EDZ that will take you back to Twilight Gap. Load it up and get to hunting those frames. This is actually going to be a lot like the Not Forged in Light quest from way back in the Taken King of Destiny 1, which got you the exotic, the no time to explain. You're basically going to be going around Twilight Gap and trying to find 10 different items. These scannable items will be in the form of the tower's weapon frames. There will be 10 of them scattered across the map, and I'll show you exactly where you can find all 10 in this video. As you make your way through the map and scan all of these, you're going to get awesome audio logs between Osiris, Saint-14, and even Lord Shax, with the three characters engaging in some pretty top-tier banter. And those audio logs will advance as you collect more and more frames. Alright, let's go ahead and dive on into that. The first frame is located near the starting point, over to the right. It'll be leaning against the boulder that you spawn next to. From this spot, if you head over to the railings on the back left, you'll find another weapon frame located directly in front of the view of the Traveler. And then from here, if you walk along the railing and look over to the left, when you see the door that has the number 4 on it, there will be another weapon frame located directly to the right. There's another leaning against the crates on the second floor of the room in front of Control Point A. From there, if you hop off the ledge and head into the room directly beneath you, there will be one in the middle of the floor. On the second floor, in the middle of the map, if you look inside the shipping crate, you'll find another weapon frame. If you head over to the back of the map, on the opposite end of where you initially spawned in, behind control point C, you'll find another frame downstairs, near the back of the room. From here, you can head outside to the nearby cannon and you'll find another weapon frame located directly in front of it. If you head underneath the middle of the map, over near the stairs on the right hand side, you'll find another weapon frame located directly against the wall. If you head directly over to the area where control point B is usually located, you'll find yet another weapon frame leaning against the crate on the back left. But anyways, once you've found all 10 of these weapon frames, you'll get a nice heartwarming audio log between Shax, Osiris, and Saint-14 himself. And at the end of it, you will receive the Devil's Ruin Exotic Solar Sidearm, as well as some additional bits of lore if you decide to stick around in the mission and listen to a bunch of guys reminisce about the old times. You even get to hear Shaq sing a little bit. But congratulations, Guardian, you've got your brand new exotic sidearm. And it is something special. The Devil's Ruin comes with the ability Close the Gap, Variable Trigger, Press and Release to fire individual shots, Hold to charge up a high-powered, staggering laser, strong against unstoppable champions. And this is, of course, the main ability on the Devil's Ruin. You can use it like a normal sidearm, an extremely stable normal sidearm at that. Dispensing rounds in a semi-automatic fashion, but if you hold the trigger, the weapon will build up a powerful beam that will expel all of your remaining ammo. And of course, this acts as a way to stagger unstoppable champions as well. It's a really interesting little sidearm. It's in the 300 RPM archetype, and it's got a really decent amount of range and stickiness tied to it. Believe me, when you play around with this thing, you'll notice it feels a bit more sticky than other sidearms do. And maybe it's just me, but this thing feels as stable as sidearms can be. I know I have a much easier time keeping this thing on target than I do with stuff like Buzzard or the Translation Theory. But, moving on... 
The Devil's Ruin also comes with extended barrel, projection fuse, and its special trait, pyrogenesis. Fully charging the laser refills the magazine from reserves. And it's also got a combat grip to help greatly control recoil. But that special ability, pyrogenesis, is actually a little bit interesting. It doesn't exactly work the way that the tooltip tells you it does. Firing that laser doesn't necessarily reload the gun from reserves. What it does is it makes it so that no matter when you activate that laser, no matter how much ammo you currently have in the gun, it's going to shoot back up to maximum and then fully drain. I'll give you an example here. This gun's magazine size is 15, but if you fire it down to say one bullet and then activate that charge, the magazine will shoot back up to 15 and then fire the full power of that laser. Even if you don't have any shots in reserve, Basically meaning that as long as you have one bullet in this gun, you can fire the full powered laser no problem. But it doesn't reload itself like the tooltip might have you thinking with the, the way it's kind of worded right there. Like I said, it's a little bit weird. But I kind of understand the gameplay loop that you're supposed to be using with this thing. Optimally speaking, you're supposed to be firing it like a normal sidearm and then when your ammo gets low, boom, you hold that charge button, you get a full powered laser, then you reload and go back to it again. At least I assume that's the optimal way you're supposed to be playing with it. And honestly, I could see that working. Because like I said, this thing as a normal sidearm functions pretty darn well. It's got really respectable range. It is as sticky as sticky can be, and it's super duper stable. Making it a really solid performer in PvE and even in PvP. I took this thing into the Crucible and actually had a lot of fun with it. Now, maybe my experience was a little bit tainted by the fact that basically everyone else was also using Devil's Ruin, but I was really impressed with how well this thing sticks to targets, the fact that the recoil does not kick at all. It makes it very easy to control this thing, whether you're using mouse and keyboard or a controller. And the fully charged beam itself functions kind of like the Prometheus lens. It is fully capable of one-shotting guardians in PvP, with enough range to qualify it as a decent mid-range weapon. The beam itself has a charge time of 1000, giving it a similar amount of charge to something like the 1000 voices. So if you're going to be charging up shots, you want to treat it a bit like a fusion rifle, pre-charge before you head running around that corner. But the effects are actually surprisingly good. No, you're not going to destroy that shotgun ape who pushes directly into close range, but at mid-range, this thing can be pretty deadly. And here's the thing, you don't even have to rely on the charge time here. I really don't want to undersell how well this gun performed as just a normal sidearm in PvP. I wound up having a lot of fun with it, and I think you Guardians will too. But alright, that is it for your guide video on how exactly you can get the Devil's Ruin Exotic Solar Sidearm. Yeah, this quest did not take very long at all. So if you haven't started it yet, don't worry, you'll be able to get your hands on this thing in no time flat. But that's it, those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. How do you feel about the quest? Do you think it might have been a little bit too short or was it just right? Was it just the amount of hunting you wanted to have to do for a brand new weapon? And what do you think about the Devil's Ruin? If you had a chance to play with it, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. It's a whole new year and we're finally back from Christmas break. And oh boy, does it feel good. That's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.